It presented evidence that the diversity of life arose by common descent through a branching pattern of evolution. Before developing his theories and writing this book, Darwin spent five years on HMS Beagle. The Beagle sailed across the Atlantic Ocean, and then carried out detailed hydrographical surveys around the coast of the southern part of South America, returning via Tahiti and Australia after having circumnavigated the Earth. Darwin spent most of the time on land investigating geology and making natural history collections, while the Beagle surveyed and charted coasts. Puzzled by the geographical distribution of wildlife and fossil, he collected on the voyage. At least five people were killed and several others wounded when Sudanese security forces opened fire on demonstrators in Khartoum and elsewhere in the country Saturday. The Sudan Doctors' Committee said four people died from gunshots and one suffocated from tear gas in Khartoum and Omdurman on Saturday. Several other protesters were wounded, including from gunshots. The rallies came two days after military coup leader General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan reappointed himself the head of the Sovereign Council, Sudan's interim governing body. Thursday's move angered the pro-democracy alliance and frustrated the United States and other countries that have urged the military to reverse its coup and to restore civilian rule. Chocolate diamonds that are actually brown diamonds are compared to the well-known white diamond, which aren't of much worth. Diamonds are produced in mines. The best-known diamond mines are in Australia, South Africa and Russia. The largest diamond mine was discovered in 1976 in the desert of Australia near a little creek named Lake Argyle. Diamonds are created under very extreme conditions of pressure and high temperature. It is a general misunderstanding that there exist only white colorless diamonds. Actually, diamonds exist in many different colors. Of all the diamond mines in the world, almost 80% of the diamonds produced are brownish in color.
A massive tow truck worked Saturday to remove the remains of a burned-out oil tanker that exploded in a giant fireball overnight near the capital of Sierra Leone. Reuters' David Doyle has more. Deputy Health Minister Amara Jambai said the death toll currently stands at 99 with more than 100 people being treated in hospitals and clinics across the capital, Freetown. In a video from the scene shared online, the head of the National Disaster Management Agency, Brima Bura Sisse, said, We've got so many casualties, burnt corpses, adding, It's a terrible, terrible accident. Freetown's mayor said the extent of the damage from Friday's explosion was not yet known, adding that police and her deputy were at the scene to assist disaster management officials. Forests are an important part of civilization. They not only form a considerable portion of the national wealth of a country, but also play an important role in maintaining the environmental balance. Indiscriminate felling of trees to enhance city areas is a threat to our civilization. We often forget that a peaceful, sensitive and well-balanced coexistence of man-made civilization and natural flora and fauna is absolutely important for human existence on the earth. We forget that deforestation for the urbanization project led to the destruction of past civilizations such as Mohenjo-Daro. Indiscriminate felling of trees not only leaves our planet with fewer trees but also threatens the wildlife of the region. No matter how busy one's schedule is, it is very important to schedule time for self-care, specifically for expressing creativity. Trying out different hobbies is a great way to explore one's creativity because it can be very enjoyable. Some people find one hobby and fall in love with it so much it becomes their passion. For example, I love to play with natural ingredients and blend essential oils. Making all natural, organic skincare products and teaching the recipes in my community workshops is one of my passions. Some people prefer to try different hobbies for shorter periods of time, or change them up each season to stay interested and keep trying different things. One great thing about hobbies is that there are no set rules.
Colombia on Tuesday adopted a tax reform plan that was at the root of violent anti-government protests that left more than 60 people dead this year, but was eventually reconfigured to be kinder to the middle class and the poor. President Ivan Duque signed the so-called Social Investment Law, which has as its stated objective to combat poverty in a country hit hard by the coronavirus epidemic. He says the law will, quote, benefit nearly 29 million Colombians in a vulnerable situation, out of a total population of some 50 million. A first version of the law presented by Duque early this year to combat the economic consequences of the global health crisis would have significantly increased taxes on an already battered middle class. World Wetland Day was celebrated for the first time in 1997. The day is observed to raise public awareness of wetland values and benefits in general and the Ramsar Convention in particular. Since 1997, the Ramsar Secretariat provides outreach materials to help raise public awareness about the importance and value of wetlands. For World Wetlands Day in 2016, the theme is, Wetlands for Our Future, Sustainable Livelihoods. As per the Ramsar Convention, this theme is selected to demonstrate the vital role of wetlands for the future of humanity and specifically their relevance towards achieving the new sustainable development goals. More than a billion people make a living from wetlands. How many rolls, cookies or baby carrots would you have to eat to feel full? It's probably more than you'd want to admit. It may not even be possible with carrots. But what if you ate that volume of filet mignon? Hunger and fullness are controlled by hormones that send messages between your gut and your head. And different foods send different messages. Some say eat more and others warn you to slow down. Now a study finds that protein is, indeed, key in generating signals of fullness. The work is in the journal cell. Mice that lack receptors to sense that they were eating protein kept chowing down without appearing to feel full.
The Romans celebrated New Year on 1 March so the name September is derived from Latin words meaning seventh month. October was the eighth month, November was the ninth month and December was the tenth month. In England, New Year was not in January until 1752. January is named after the Roman god Janus, who was the god of gates, doors, and beginnings. February may be named after the Roman festival of Februa. March is named after Mars the god of war. June is named after the goddess Juno and July is named after Julius Caesar. August is named after Augustus Caesar. The origin of the names of the other months is not certain. April is believed to be derived from the Latin word aperier, which means to open because buds opened at that time. For the first 30 years of his life, Beethoven could listen to and play music effortlessly. As a result, he understood sounds of musical instruments and the pitch of the singing voices. He knew the harmony between music and singing before he became completely deaf. His deafness was not sudden, but a gradual decline. This slow process of losing his hearing activated his mind to imagine how his compositions would sound like. When he became completely deaf, he started to observe the vibrations of the piano. The observations helped him realize that he could not hear the high notes of the piano. To be able to hear his own compositions, he sawed off the legs of his piano. Beijing often suffers choking air. But there's now one more thing proven to dissipate it, an Olympics. The 2008 Summer Games impelled those in charge of the Chinese capital to clear the air. Not only did they banish smog and smoke, they also inadvertently cut greenhouse gas emissions by as much as 96,000 metric tons during the Games. That's according to a new analysis published in Geophysical Research Letters on July 20. The key was banning half of all the private cars in the city from driving on any particular day during the event. The finding suggests that individual choices like whether to drive or take public transit to work have major cumulative effects.
This is a great lesson for all of us to learn, that in all matters the two extremes are alike. The extreme positive and the extreme negative are always similar. When the vibrations of light are too slow we do not see them, nor do we see them when they are too rapid. So is with sound. When very low in pitch we do not hear it, when very high we do not hear it either. Of like nature is the difference between resistance and non-resistance. One man does not resist because he is weak, lazy and cannot, because he will not. The other man knows that he can strike an irresistible blow if he likes. Yet he not only does not strike, but blesses his enemies.